Hallelujah. Small groups start this week. If you uh, would, please become a part of that. That's where we're moving. We're moving into these things. And this is a place where you can build some good friendships. Say friendships. Um, but pastor, I really don't need a friend. Baloney. That is a wrong thinking. Let me tell you, we all need friends. Isn't that true? Now, your husband, your wife, that's your best friend, or they should be. How many of you know marriage can actually be made in heaven? But it takes work on earth. Is that true? How many of you uh, found out that the first few weeks of marriage were just awesome? <laughs> and then after that, life set in. Is that right? <laughs> Found out that she's not cut out of the same cloth as you. He's not cut out of the same cloth as you. And, and so you had to do some changing. I remember one of the first times my wife came out and she said, do you always have to leave your dirty underwear in the middle of the floor? There's the hamper. It's three feet away. Can't you just... Can you hurry? Did that ever happen to anybody? No? Yeah. Still? <laughs> <laughs> well, it worked in my house because I did want to get some meals and a few other things. So we learned how to adapt. Can you say adapt? Yeah. Are we good at adapting? Yeah. We better be, hadn't we? We better be, hadn't we? <laughs> so the small groups start this week. Make that a, a part of your, your routine. Be a part of that. And come get blessed. Monday night football starting tomorrow night. I'm going to be hosting that. Actually, Freddie and I will be hosting that. And uh, you can be a part of that. That is a couples group if you want to be. A lot of ladies don't like football, but there are some ladies that do like football. So you can come be a part of that, and we'll have some good food and good fellowship and, and watch some fun on TV at the same time. And then, uh, then Bethany's group is going Thursday, I think. Um, what? 6.30. That's the one on courage, fear, overcoming fear. Is that a good thing? I don't really have any fears, Pastor. I had, I had my mom would always tell me, you know, I don't really, I'm not really afraid of anything, Jan. I said, well, let's go to the car. Uh, let's go to the store. Well, you drive. I don't want to drive. <laughs> I'm not afraid of anything but, but driving. You know. <laughs> we all have fears and issues we have to overcome. Isn't that true? Mm-hmm, it sure is. And then uh, my sister is doing one, Crash the Chatterbox, which is really uh, dealing with the battle of the mind and the heart and how to overcome the enemy's thoughts that just bombard you day after day after day after day, sometimes hour after hour. So make that a part of your routine. When is yours? 6.30 Tuesday. So be a part of that if you can, all right? So today we're going to continue talking about 2019, the year of abundant harvest. This is our year. Say, this is our year. I need that, don't you? Yeah, can, can, you, can you believe that we're already almost halfway through the month of September, nine months in to 2019? Doesn't that blow your mind? How time flies, except when we were a kid and we were waiting for Christmas. Then it seemed like it just took forever, you know? I remember my mom saying, six weeks till Christmas. Six weeks, <laughs> that's forever. Yeah, six weeks now comes and goes and we're not even aware of it. Is that true? 2019 is the year of abundant harvest and, and we're learning about how to harvest. That, that's what it's all about, learning how to harvest. How do I harvest? We talked about that last week. Remember? How do you harvest? How do you harvest from the Word of God? Keep it before your eyes. Keep it in your ears. 
Don't let it depart from your mouth. Keep it in your mouth. Keep talking it. Is that true? That's all a part of harvest. So today we're going to continue on and we're going to talk about the mighty duo. Those of you that grew up in the 60s, who was the mighty duo? Do, 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 do. Same bat channel. Same bat place. Remember that? Same bat time. Yeah. The mighty duo. Now, the, the, this is a more modern picture. They put some muscles on Robin. Changed his hair, but... Hey, 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 Batman and Robin, the mighty duo, pow, smash. <laughs> yeah, slap, bam. Is that how it went? Yes, it did. So we find this duo that we're going to talk about today in Hebrews 6. And this is so important, say so important. So I'm going to strongly encourage you to pay attention. Say pay, pay. Attention. attention. I heard Charles Capps say one time, at one point in his life, he was so poor he couldn't even pay attention. <laughs> Keep your eyes and your ears open because I'm going to give you a key that will absolutely guarantee success. What's success for the believer? I'll just tell you. The fulfillment of the promise of God in your life. The fulfillment of the promise of God in your life. So, Hebrews chapter 6. We're going to read verses 11 and 12 first. Then we're going to talk just a second about the mighty duo. And then we're going to continue on in Hebrews 6. Here we go. It is our earnest wish that every one of you should show a similar keenness. There's that word, keenness. Isn't that a 60s word? Keen, man. Keenness. In fully grasping the hope that is within you, we do not want any of you to grow slack, but to follow the example of those who through sheer patient faith came to possess the promises Patient faith. Say patient. Oh. How many of us love patience? If that's your wife's name, I hope you love patience. But that's not kind of patience I'm talking about. Patient faith. Have you ever been in traffic and had to be patient? How many of you were patient pleasantly? Did you know that if you're not patient pleasantly, you're not patient? Pastor, how can you say that? I'm speaking from personal experience. Traffic tries, <laughs> tries your patience. Is that true? Have you, have you seen so many distracted drivers? Wow. Wow. Phew. Moving mighty right along here. Mm. Sheer patient faith. Through sheer patient faith, they came to possess the promises. Isn't that our goal? To possess the promises? So here's the duo. The mighty duo is faith and patience. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 13 through 20. This is out of the J.B. Phillips. It says this, When God made his promise to Abraham, he swore by himself. For there was no one greater by whom he could swear. So God takes an oath for Abraham's sake. And the scripture says he swore by himself. What does it mean to swear? It doesn't mean to cuss. What does it mean to swear? It means he took an oath. How can we relate that to today? Today we relate it to when a person goes up and he's called on as a witness in a trial, in a, in a, in a whatever the crime might be, and he's called as a witness. 
They bring them forward. Now, today, they don't do it as much as they used to. But they had something that was there, and they would tell you, raise your right hand, raise your hand, place your right hand on the, and swear. Is that right? I swear to tell the, the whole truth. So help me. And who were they swearing by? It's the greatest truth teller of all. Is that correct? And so that's what uh, Paul is saying here in the book of Hebrews. God swore by himself because who's he going to swear by? Abraham, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help me. So help me. <laughs> he swore by himself. And what did he swear? Surely blessing, I will bless you, and multiplying, I will multiply you. And then Abraham, after patient endurance, endurance found the promise true. Here's the first thing you need to understand. God has promised to bless you. You hearing me? God has promised to bless you. What is the blessing? The blessing is not, you. God bless you. When God speaks a blessing, it is his oath to you. Isaiah 51 tells us this. God talking to the children of Israel. But if you read that chapter, you'll find out he's talking to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, I'm the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. So God's talking to me. And in Isaiah 51, he tells them, go back to the rock from which you were hewn. And look at, guess who he says? Abraham and Sarah. Did you know we were cut out of Abraham and Sarah? Well, pastor, what does that mean? Right here. God made a promise to you and me through Abraham. And he said, surely I will bless you. Surely. Say, surely. Anybody in here named Shirley? Good. Surely I will bless you. What does it mean? If you look throughout all of the Old Testament, King David, the scripture says the blessing of the Lord was on David and he did mighty things. Was King David rich? Did you know in today's currency, at the end of David's life, he gave an offering to build the temple of God, and he gave $4 billion out of his own personal account. And all of his warriors that traveled with him, they gave another $12 billion. And it said the blessing of the Lord was on them. That's why King Solomon said, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he adds no sorrow to it. Are you hearing me? God said, I will bless you. Scripture says that on Gideon, the blessing of the Lord was on Gideon. Did Gideon do mighty things? Who's Gideon? Uncle Gideon. Who's Gideon? Did he do mighty things? 300 men, he defeated four armies with 300 men through the blessing of the Lord that was on him. How about um, Samson? Did you know the scripture says the blessing of the Lord was on Samson? The blessing would come on him. You know what Samson would do? Mighty things. He chased after a harlot. No, that's not what he did. When the, when the blessing of the Lord came on Samson, he did mighty things for God. And I am telling you, when God spoke to Abraham and he said, surely I will bless you, he was talking to you and me. Is that really real, pastor? 
Take your pastor's word because your pastor has studied it. Obviously, some of you haven't. The blessing of the Lord belongs to you. Amen. Well, what is in that blessing? Everything you will ever need in this earth. Ooh. All right. Then Abraham, after patient endurance, found the promise true. So that by two utterly immutable things. What does immutable mean? Undeniable, unchangeable. Can't, can't move away from it. Once it's out there, it's a done deal. Can you agree with that? By two, two. Say two. Yeah. Utterly immutable things. The word of God and the oath of God who cannot lie. We who are refugees from this dying world might have a source of strength and might grasp the hope that he holds out to us. This hope we hold as the utterly reliable anchor for our souls. Let's go on to that next slide. Anchor for our souls. She's getting there. This hope we hold as the utterly reliable what? What does an anchor do? How many of you have seen some of those anchors that they put like on the air aircraft carriers and some of those? Have you seen those things? How big are they? They're like about three feet tall and about... <laughs> yeah, they're, they're massive. Big as this room, he said. And they'll drop one from each side of the port. Mm -hmm. boom, boom. They're huge. And what's its purpose? Wow. And the Bible says that we have God's promise as an anchor to our soul. Why would you need an anchor to the soul? Mm. says it's an utterly reliable anchor for our souls. Fixed. Say fixed. Fixed in the very certainty of God himself in heaven, where Jesus has already entered on our behalf. Did you know when Jesus said, it is of the utmost importance importance that I go to my father. He wasn't lying. He was telling the truth. It was important that he go back to the father. Well, why did he go back to Jesus? Because I miss God. I miss God. Why did he go back to heaven? I miss God. I miss him. I miss him so much. What does the scripture say? He went back to heaven. Why? On our behalf. Whoo, Glory. Say glory. glory. I shared this in the early service, and I feel led to do that again. Did, how many of you have loved ones that have gone on before you? Do you know they're not just walking around heaven, drinking from the river of life and eating fruit and playing? So, yes, playing on a harp and singing golden songs. You know what they're doing? They're praying for you. Hebrews 12 says we have this great cloud of witness, yeah. witnesses and they're looking on and they're praying for us. Did you know they're praying for your success? You really believe that? What's Jesus doing? Isn't Jesus our father? Isn't he our progenitor? Isn't he the one that started this whole human race called the new creation? And I'm telling you, they get up there with him. I, I, I shared this story um, Friday night after the, the experience. I was sharing this story. Brother Copeland made this comment. His mom had gone home to heaven. And he said he was in a, a discouraged time. He, and things were happening in the ministry that he wished weren't happening. And things were struggling. 
And he said, one morning early in prayer, he's just praying away. And he said, the Lord started talking to him and saying this, I will see to it that you succeed no matter what. And he said, why me, Lord? And he said, because your mother is in my face constantly. <laughs> and he meant it. He meant it. Amen. I'm telling you, we have loved ones. My mama and my daddy gone on before me. They're praying for my success. Yes. And they're joining right in with the Lord Jesus Christ. The greatest of them all. Hallelujah. Moving right along. Thank you, Jesus. Notice the phrase, patient endurance. Isn't, doesn't that just stir up excitement? Patient endurance. Getting behind the steering wheel in busy traffic trying to get to work on time. Sitting at a red light. You're number four back in the line. And the green light comes on and you're still sitting and you're still sitting, and you're still sitting, and you're just smiling with patient endurance. As you're going, Bing! <laughs> patient endurance. Doesn't it just stir up all wonderful thoughts? Well, let me tell you, what the Bible calls patient endurance is a lot different than what we experience. Yeah, not pounding. It didn't do any good, did it? <laughs> Many times when we hear the word patience connected with the word faith, we get a mental picture of us going about our daily routine, waiting for God to do what he said. Let me repeat that a little bit slower. Many times when we hear the word patience connected with the word faith, patient faith. We get a mental picture of us going about our daily routine, <laughs> just waiting for God to do what he said. But there is no truth to that image. Remember last week I said this, Brother Hagen, a quote, the blessings of God will not fall on you like ripe cherries off of a tree. What's the key? Patient endurance. What does that mean? Hang in there. If we properly understand this phrase, patient endurance, then we will know that there is something that we must endure. Say endure. In other words, there is a real fight to real faith. 1 Timothy 6.12 says this. Fight the worthwhile battle of faith. Do you see it's a worthwhile battle? Keep your grip on that life eternal to which you have been called and to which you boldly professed your loyalty before many witnesses. Fight the worthwhile battle of faith. There is a battle ahead. And you know what it takes to get through it? Patient endurance. Yeah, but, you know, God is in control of everything. The only thing God is in control of is that which you let him control. If God was in control of everything in this earth, this earth would not look the same. Scripture plainly says, The heaven and the heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he's given to the children of men. So who's con in control of the earth? You and me. Well, I thought the devil was. Well, the devil sinned, and God turned his, uh, the devil turned his, excuse me, 
Man turned his authority over to the devil, but man is still in control. The problem is, is now man has the same spirit of the devil. And so everything in this earth has been poisoned. God came, sent his son with a promise, with the blood. Jesus overcame and brought a new creation called you and me. And he put us back in control. But you can't control other men. You can only, only control who? And to control yourself, say this with me, control myself takes patience endurance. Woo! Glory. Mm-hmm. Let me read that out of 1 Timothy one more time. Fight the worthwhile battle. Fight the worthwhile battle of faith. Keep your grip on that life. If he is encouraging us to keep our grip on it, what must that mean? There's something out there that could cause us to let go. Is that true? Yes. Keep your grip. How many of you ever played baseball? Let me see. Did you not have to hold that bat? What happens if you didn't? Yeah. How many of you played golf? How many, don't you have to hold that golf club? What happens if you don't hold it tight? <laughs> Keep your grip on it. How many of you ever shot a gun? And what happens if you loosen your hand, the, your grip on that gun? You might get a headache. Mm -hmm. Is that true? It might knock you right between the eyeballs. I've seen those on, on YouTube where they get, as a matter of fact, I, I, I don't have two hands to do this. But I saw one where this guy was going to be Mr. Macho, and he held a shotgun out in front of his face. Oh. <laughs> he pulled the trigger, and guess what he did? Knocked him out. He was flat on the ground. And as I was watching it, I was going, <laughs> that's the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> My, I, I was thinking, I didn't say it out loud, I was thinking, can you be so dumb and still breathe? That's amazing. <laughs> Obviously, you've never really shot a gun. First time my daddy tucked me out with the 12-gauge shotgun, he said, press it tight against your shoulder, son. I pressed it as tight as I could, and I pulled that trigger. Just about wet my britches. I was 12 years old. And I had a sore for a week. Mm-hmm. Hold on to that thing tight. That's what he's telling us here in Timothy. All right. Um, let's go to the next slide, number 12. Remember, we want to harvest. Is that true? Isn't that success? Harvest. When we would plant wheat in our fields, and about nine to ten months later, we'd pull the combine in, guess what we were expecting? Harvest! That was called success to us. Notice in this pick, you're doing the driving. God ain't. You is. Do you understand this? That's why we're talking about how to harvest. God, I'm just waiting on you. God, I'm just waiting on you. <laughs> no, you got some driving to do. But pastor, God said, by grace are we saved and not of works. Wrong kind of works, my friend. It takes work to receive your harvest. What do you mean by that? Because there's a devil in the earth 
that's trying to steal everything from you. Kill, steal, and destroy. And it takes work. What kind of work? The hardest kind of work there is. Patience. Now, honestly, how hard is it? How hard is it to be patient? What kind of physical effort does it take for you to be patient? Where is the work? Is it not in your soul? Mind, will, and emotions. And don't we have a promise from God that says it is an anchor to our soul? Notice your faith is working in the combine. The Bible is a representation there. The, the combine is a rep representation of the Bible. It's actually doing the work. The Bible is actually doing its work. Because your faith is connected to it. But you have to be in the driver's seat. Well, how are we in the driver's seat? I am so glad you asked. I heard that question loud and clear. This whole process takes time. Say time. 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 You know, uh, what was the name of the group, Toby Mac? DC Talk. Time is ticking away. Time is ticking away. Let me, yeah, it's old school. I mean, it goes back to the 90s. Really old school. <laughs> Old school is what my parents used to listen to. Isn't that true? Mm -hmm. Lawrence Welk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, you're right. Mm -hmm. Do you see that clock up there? Is that look like it's been there for a while? How many of you have been standing on the promise and you're pretty sure the clock looks like that? Mm -hmm. And, and that calendar in the background, how many of you have just watched that calendar like a fan? <laughs> but the truth is, we have a promise of God, and it will never fail. God's word, can, he swore an oath through the blood of Jesus to you, saying, I will surely bless you. The promise, that, the promise that God gave you, church, hear me, please hear me. The promise God gave you, it can't fail. If it doesn't come to pass in your life, it's because there's been a disconnect somewhere. It's because you lost your grip. And God is telling you, don't let go of my promise. Don't let go. Because I swore by myself. Because there's nobody else greater. I swore by myself. I will surely bless you. You can take hold of that. And you can hold on to it. And it will surely come to pass. That's the promise. That's the promise. That's the promise. Pastor, you're weird. Thank you. Yes. Hebrews 6 calls it sheer, patient faith and patient endurance. Sheer, patient faith. Have you ever had to do something where it just took sheer patience? I watched my wife give birth to four children with no anesthetic. That's a woman. <laughs> and I watched her in sheer determination to go right through that. I 
Let me tell you, when it's talking about sheer patient faith, it means you just bite down and what what they say? Bear down. Bear down. I mean, you just push. Sheer, patient faith. Why would we need sheer, patient faith? Because something along the lines is trying to steal it from you. And you just have to be more determined than it is. That's the truth. That is the God-given truth. That really is difficult to swallow because we have been programmed by this world and formal lustful desires. And definitely more fun than reading the Bible, meditating on the Word, going to church so that we can get strengthened in our faith. But those are the things that gives us sheer, patient faith. Read the Word, stay in the Word. Go to church. Why do we go to church? Because I have to. Why do we go to church? <laughs> to get encouraged to stand. Amen. Because you can see, wow, I thought I was going through some junk. Look at their life. And they're still standing. Amen. Wow. We had a lady in the first service. She lost her husband last fall. And I am telling you, she has been through some bad stuff. And yet, she was here this morning. And you know what? She came in struggling, hurt, sad. When she left, she had a smile on her face, and she was rejoicing. And she said, that's exactly what I needed. The only place you get that is in church. Amen. Trust me, you don't get it at Walmart. You don't get it at Dillard's. The late 20th century evangelist, Myth Wigglesworth, made this statement. Great faith is born out of great trials. Oh, pastor, I want to be known as a person of great faith. Get ready. Are you sure? Dr. Jerry Savelle said this. You can't have a testimony without first having a test. Brother Hagin said this. If you're going to walk in great victory, then you're going to have to endure some things. Boy, isn't that exciting? Pastor, <laughs> that's the most exciting thing I've ever heard. No, it ain't. Why isn't it? Can I let you in on a secret? We don't like waiting. But if you understand what waiting does in the spirit, you'll wait for anything. And my good friend, great pastor Tim Hackett stated over and over again, there are no shortcuts in God. You know, at 12 years old, 12 years old, I was on the combine, running a combine. And I'd pull into that field with that combine. And at 12 years old, young teen, almost 13, 12 years old, I was a teenager, basically. I looked for every shortcut possible because I wanted to get home and play. Didn't want to be up on that old, hot, dry, dusty. Didn't have a cab. Didn't have air conditioning. Just had a, a John Deere umbrella over the top of it. And you'd sit in that dust. It'd blow in your face and bugs and wheat chaff and everything. I mean, you'd come home and you, you, my mom wouldn't even let me in the house. I had to wash off outside before I even got in the door. 
And I looked for every which way to make a shortcut. But you know what? There were no shortcuts to getting that field harvested. So I did the next best thing. I'd whine. <laughs> Dad, can't you make William, my brother, do it? Dad, why do I have to do it? He's on the tractor. But Dad, can't you get my other brother to do it? No shortcuts in God. Only you. Romans 5, verses 2 through 5. This is out of the Passion. Listen to this. This just blows me away. What incredible joy bursts forth within us as we keep on celebrating our hope of experiencing God's glory. Say, incredible joy. Did you know that patient endurance brings incredible joy? Yes, pastor, I know that. <laughs> I'm so happy right now that I'm waiting. What, what did Paul know that we don't? What incredible joy. Say incredible joy. You know what the incredible joy is? He knows it's surely going to happen. He knows absolutely beyond a doubt, whatever God said, it will come to pass. May not happen exactly on the time that we would like, but it will. That's right. Dr. Jerry Savell said he's known also as Jehovah Nicotine. Because everything God does is just in the nick of time. <laughs> what incredible joy bursts forth within us as we keep on celebrating our hope of experiencing God's glory. What is that glory? It's the victory. It's your success. But that's not all. Even in times of trouble, tests, trials, we have a joyful confidence. Really? Does this guy know what he's talking about? Even in times of trouble, tests, and trial, we have a joyful confidence knowing that our pressures will develop in us patient endurance. Say patient. He said we are excited because we're going through these pressures and it's going to bring patient endurance. But he just didn't leave us hanging there. <laughs> and patient endurance will refine our character. And proven character leads us right back to hope. And this hope is not a disappointing fantasy. Do you understand the promise that God made to you? I don't care if it hasn't come to pass yet. The promise God made to us is not a fantasy. It is his word. And his word to you will surely come to pass. And yes, you may have to go through some things and go through some things and go through some things because there's an enemy that's trying to get you to let go. It's not God that's trying to get you to let go. It's the devil. But you're going to have to take all of it. You're going to have to bear down and push through because victory is yours. Guaranteed by the blood of Jesus. The oath. Ooh. Even in times of trouble, tests, and trials, we have a joyful confidence knowing that our pressures will develop in us patient endurance. And patient endurance will refine our character and proven character leads us back to hope. And this hope is not a dis disappointing fantasy because we now experience the endless love of God cascading into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who lives in us. That love is cascading. You know what a cascade is? Yeah, that's what I put in my dishes. No, you know what a cascade is? It means it just keeps flowing and flowing and flowing and flowing. How many of you have watched those big waterfalls as the water cascades down over those rocks? Isn't it the most beautiful thing? 
Do you know over time, over time, over time, over time, that water is water. It's, it's just water. But it, it washes those rocks. It, it erodes them away, makes their edges smooth. And the cascading love of God is making that patient endurance smooth and solid. It's an anchor to our soul. Why does it need to be an anchor to our soul? Because that's where the battle is. Mind, will, and emotions. That's where the attack is. Fight the good fight of faith. Where do we fight it? Not true? So where does patient endurance come into play? Joshua 1.8. This is where we left off with last week. Joshua 1.8. It's coming. There's Josh. Say Josh. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. And we have that, that display. Remember, if they get it up, it'll come up. Remember? It showed this book of the law. Then it showed, keep it in your what? The, the, the older translation says, do not let it depart out of your mouth. The root word of that depart means withdraw. Don't let it withdraw from your mouth. Keep it in your mouth. Keep it coming out. Glory. Keep that word in your mouth. Keep it speaking it. Make sure you focus your attention on it. In your heart, 24-7. Do you understand that 24-7 is where patient endurance comes in yeah but I need it right now pastor you just don't understand I need it right now it ain't coming right now so what do you do keep standing but pastor you're taking all my hope away. Anchor to the soul. Amen. You know what I have noticed over the years? That if I, the blessing that I really needed right now, right now, didn't come, I still succeeded. I still made it through. And the victory still came. Just didn't happen the way I wanted it to. Didn't happen when I wanted it to. Or even how I wanted it to. But eventually it came. Why? Because God will never forsake you or leave you. He made his promise to you. You just have to bear it. Bear down. Bear down. Devil, you're not stealing this promise from me. Why is it an anchor to our soul? Because it is our soul that is like the ship on the sea, tossed. I've got it, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. It's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. It's never, I got it, I got it, I got it. It's never going to happen. I'm gonna, as long as you allow the winds of turmoil and adversity to blow you like that, you can never, the Bible says in James, you can never receive anything from God. That's why he gave us an anchor to the soul. It's his word. When God gave you a promise, it's guaranteed. Say guaranteed. guaranteed. It's guaranteed. It will come to pass. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing. Hearing by... Notice it's faith coming by the word of God in your heart, in your mouth. It's not Brother Copeland's word. Well, if he did it for Brother Copeland, he'll do it for me. Not true. I've known a lot of people that got blessed, and they didn't get blessed like Brother Copeland, but they got blessed. Just because it happens for somebody else don't mean it's guaranteed for you. What you have to do 
is get this word in your mouth, in your heart. Not Brother Copeland's word in your mouth. This word. Because this word, say this word, is life. Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. Yeah, but it's just so much more fun to listen through Brother Copeland. Eh, it, it might be fun for your ears, but you need it from this. You need it from the almighty God to your heart. And when you get that word in your mouth, and you get it in your heart, and you get it in your eyes, and you get it in your ears, and you just keep going over and over and letting that work in you, I am telling you here today, it will surely come to pass. That's the promise of God. Stand to your feet. Thank you, Father. Right now, I pray over this precious congregation of yours. Lord, we are the sons and the daughters of the Most High God. We have been called and appointed to live for such a time as this. Yeah. Lord, we have not been called to live unto ourselves but to live unto you, unto your plan, unto your purpose. And Father, we have in your word your promise. Surely I will bless you. So Father, we don't look to the world or the world has disappointed us so many times. Why is it we still look there? I don't know. Lord, we look to you. Lord, the promises of men have failed us, but your promise will never fail. Lord, I thank you today with that word. Surely I will bless you and I will multiply you and you will be a blessing to the world. Lord, that's far bigger and greater than I've ever experienced or understood. And I thank you, Lord, that's your promise to me. So, Lord, I decree and I declare that the voice of the Spirit of God is speaking to hearts right now, revealing the plan of the Lord Jesus Christ to them and the hope of the gospel. It is not a disappointing fantasy. It is the very truth of God. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help me, says God. You are blessed. Say this with me. I am blessed. Say it again. I am blessed. Say it one more time. I am blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. Go with that in your heart today. Understand that the blessing of the Lord abides upon you. I speak this over your week in the name of Jesus. The blessing of God is going before you this week to bring about great favor and promotion and open doors in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You guys are dismissed. Love you.